Australia, the land where apparently everything is out to kill you. Is this isolated continent really just some desolate hellscape full of murderous nightmare spawn? Or are there some cute, maybe some cuddly, but definitely some weird animals out there too? I mean, it can't be all bad. Australia has given us some very beautiful creatures such as this one and, and this one. Last year I did five of America's Strangest Animals for July 4, so I thought it'd be fun for this year's Australia Day to celebrate by shining a light on some of Australia's weirdest denizens. Australia was always destined to have some of the strangest animals on the planet. I mean, these animals have evolved in isolation away from other influences for millennia. It's the home of the marsupials and the monotremes, both of which we're going to talk about in this video. But it's also just got some of the most bizarre reptiles and vertebrates and birds that to, to just ever exist. I'm here with Olive, my Australian water python, and we're going to talk about five Australian creatures found nowhere else on the planet. And you might not even believe some of these are from this planet. Everyone knows kangaroos. They're probably Australia's most famous animal. They have really big feet, really good at jumping around, pretty good at rapping. What many people don't know though, is that kangaroos have a distant cousin. It's basically a kangaroo lemur hybrid and that gives you the tree kangaroo. Now there's just over a dozen species of tree kangaroo. They range from Northern Australia up through Papua New Guinea into Indonesia and tropical rainforests and mountainous jungles. And they are fully arboreal marsupials. Marsupials are a special type of mammal that don't give traditional live birth like most mammals do. Say humans, for example, babies usually in mom for about nine months and when it comes out, it's already a couple pounds in weight. Marsupials, the little baby will come out and it'll be so small, it'll be a little jelly bean sized baby and that little baby will climb up mom's stomach and hang out in her pouch on her belly and they'll be in there for a better part of a year in some species until they're big enough to kind of move around on their own and they'll come out. Tree kangaroos, regular kangaroos, wallabies, these are all in the macropod family of marsupials and millions and millions of years ago, these animals all actually lived up in the tree. However, their ancestors did eventually come down to the ground and adapt to a terrestrial lifestyle. Tree kangaroo ancestors, on the other hand, said nah, went back up into the trees and once again evolved to be arboreal animals, which is why a lot of modern day tree kangaroos are the largest arboreal marsupials in Australia. They can survive a jump of over 60 feet from the tops of trees down to the ground without injury. They can jump more than 20 feet between trees. They have these really sharp claws for holding on, these powerful limbs for climbing. Their tail is sometimes twice as long as their body for balancing. And they're usually found in trees anywhere from 100 to 200 feet up in the air above the ground. Like the backs of many water birds like ducks, water will just roll right off a tree kangaroo's back thanks to special whorls that they have in their fur, essentially making them waterproof. They sleep like 50 to 60% of their day away, so really I should have said they're more like a kangaroo sloth hybrid than a lemur hybrid. Australia is fairly famous for its birds. You've got the kookaburra, the cockatoo, the emu, very colorful and striking features and sounds. This bird though has none of that as it looks kind of like a frumpy muppet. The tawny frog mouth kind of looks like an owl's estranged cousin, even though it's not an owl or a bird of prey at all. There's about a dozen species of them found across Australia and Tasmania, and they all, they all look sort of like a gray brown camouflage stump of fluff with these bright yellow eyes. These birds mate for life and they'll maintain and live in the same territory for their 10 plus year lifespan and they'll build the nest together. Both parents will incubate the eggs, they'll feed and raise the young together and they'll do this for the next generation and the next and the next. These birds barely, barely move, even less so than owls. They'll just sit in the tree and sleep through the day and into the night. Their camouflage feathers will keep them hidden for the most part, but they can actually do another form of camouflage defense where they'll raise their heads and flatten out their body to look more like a tree limb, and this is called stumping. Now they get their name from their very bizarre beak and mouth. They have this very wide mouth with a usually bright yellow interior. And when closed, the beak doesn't really look that much different than an owl's. It looks very, very small with a little hook at the tip of it, but that is very misleading. They eat just about anything that fits in that wide mouth of theirs. Frogs, snakes, lizards, mice, other smaller birds, invertebrates, really anything. They do share a few things with owls though, outside of their coloration and diet and nocturnalness. Like owls, they have very wide rounded wings with feathers that actually have a serrated edge to them, making them basically silent while in flight. They also have some pretty weird calls like some owls do. I, I know that would probably be really unsettling if I was walking alone in the woods at night. 
The next animal is probably one of the best definitions of small but deadly. The blue-ringed octopus is a small cephalopod found throughout the ocean waters of southern Asia down to Australia and is a truly beautiful animal. They're only six to eight inches long when full size and have this whitish yellowish body with these stunning bright blue rings that glow up when it's threatened. But don't let its small size fool you. This little eight-legged ocean creature has enough venom in it to kill 26 adult humans in minutes. Now they mostly eat small fish and crabs and shrimps and things, but because they love shallow water, they love tide pools and stuff, that puts them in line with dealing with humans quite a bit. These animals are so small and good at camouflaging that someone could step next to one or on one without even realizing it. The octopus will bite with its very small, strong beak and release its venom. Now this venom will kill small prey almost instantly, but for an adult human, they might not even feel the bite and the venom won't kick in and won't take effect for a few minutes. This little critter has a very powerful beak, easily able to break through a diver's wetsuit. And it's said that they actually have two variations of their venom, one for hunting and one for defense. Their venom has tetrotoxin in it, which is a very powerful neurotoxin. It causes almost instant paralysis in small prey items. And in adult humans, this will cause paralysis of the lungs and the diaphragm. Now there aren't many bites each year. And even then bites are actually very rarely lethal. There is no anti-venom for it though. You just have to use assisted breathing and wait for your body to naturally excrete the toxin within the next day or so. Despite being so small and dangerous though, this animal doesn't really live that long. It has an lifespan of about two years in the wild and even then females die shortly after giving birth. Before she does that though, she'll actually inject her venom into her eggs. So as her babies grow inside the egg, they'll actually develop their own venom. On top of all this, they can do the usual octopus things like contorting and squeezing their bodies to fit into these impossible small nooks and crannies. And they can change their colors instantly going from their more plain coloration to this bright striking posematic color display to let predators know not to mess with them. Just a truly gorgeous and, and alarming little creature. Australia is obviously famous for having some really awesome reptile species like the frilled dragon and the blue tongue skink, both of which we talked about on this channel before. But they've also got like saltwater crocodiles, goannas, some of the world's deadliest snake species. The reptile we're going to talk about now though, it flies under the radar for a lot of people when it really shouldn't because it is one of the strangest looking reptiles I have ever seen. Some lizards use a blue tongue or a puffed up beard or frill to deter predators. This lizard though, put all of its points and went all in on the defense stat. The thorny devil goes by many names. You've got the mountain devil, Moloch, the thorny dragon. I mean, its scientific name ends in Horridus, which is pretty intense because this lizard looks like it is from a barren hellscape, which is basically what the middle of the outback in the dry season is where this species is mostly found. Not many animals can survive here. Covered in head to tail thorny spikes, this animal is a very striking sight amidst the orange brown desert of central Australia. They're a very small lizard, but can live a long time, over 20 years, and also have a big appetite, regularly eating thousands of ants per day. And on top of being full of spikes, they also have a false head that they'll bend down and present to a predator. And this actually has the two largest spikes on their body. So if a predator goes, does go right for the head, they're in for a very painful experience. They also have a very distinct, bizarre gait as they walk where they'll kind of freeze and slowly rock their limbs before they kind of keep slowly moving. And it's believed they do this to be less suspicious and lower their chances of catching predators' eyes with movement. But probably the weirdest fact about this animal is that it can drink with its skin. Between the spikes and scales, they have this network of micro grooves that reach from its lips all the way down to the tips of its toes. And with this, they can channel water, whether it's from rain or even standing in a puddle, up through the grooves and into its mouth. And they can even bury themselves in sand or soil and let the moisture build up on them so they can channel that to drink as well. Just a very good adaptation to stay hydrated in one of the hottest places on earth. On a continent that is filled with weird creatures, I think one animal reigns supreme above all the others. Even if you've never seen it, you've probably heard about it, the platypus. This is quite possibly the weirdest mammal on the planet. It's got the mouth and feet of a duck. It's got this wide beaver-like tail and it's got a stumpy otter-like body. There is so much weird stuff to talk about with the platypus. They have webbed feet, but when they're walking on land, the webbing will actually retract between their toes to expose nails so they can walk kind of more normally. They also have no stomach. Their gullet attaches directly to their intestines. And on top of that, they don't have teeth. Whenever they're hunting, they'll go down to the bottom of the river or 
whatever body of water they're in and they'll get a bunch of gravel in their mouth. Then they'll go back up to the water surface and they'll just chomp their beak around and the stones in there will help crush the invertebrates that they've eaten. Speaking of their beak, it is basically a super organ. They have very little eyesight underwater. They're basically blind, but their beak has both mechanoreceptors and electroreceptors throughout it to help find prey. Mechanoreceptors are fine-tuned to find any movement around them, while electroreceptors can help detect electrical fields, which essentially picks up on any living organisms. Sharks have these as well. Mammals have a single pair of chromosomes in our DNA that helps determine the sex of our offspring. Platypus, on the other hand, have five pairs that do this. Now, both males and females have something kind of weird going on. Platypus are monotremes, which are egg-laying mammals. They're one of only two groups of mammals that do this, the other being echidna. And these guys, they, I mean, they only lay one or two eggs at a time, not like 30 to 40 eggs like some reptiles, but it's still very strange for a mammal to pop out actual eggs. Male platypuses, or platypusi, whatever it is on the other hand, are one of the only venomous mammals on the planet. They have these very large spurs just behind their back legs that can deliver a very painful venom into potential predators or even other rival males during mating season. The venom isn't enough to kill adult humans, but it is going to be very painful, and it is enough to kill small predators. These animals are also very hard to find and very seclusive in the wild. They have a very small range, and seeing one in captivity outside of Australia is basically impossible. Possible. The only zoo to have them outside of Australia is the San Diego Zoo, and they only got their pair, I think, in the last two years. So those were five of the strangest Australian animals for Australia Day. Like the video if you learned something. Thanks to our amazing patrons for helping out and supporting the channel. If you want to do that, links for all that will be down below. Subscribe if you want to tune in for more future animal videos I upload every week. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you later.